Nigeria. I live in Aleppo. I did decide uh, to leave my country because the war start and uh, it's bombed my house. Before the war, we, uh, we was living in very safe. My father, he was working, I was going to school. The, wa the life was normal, but when the war started, everything changed. In Syria, at least five people were killed and dozens wounded in rocket attacks on Saturday on the Christian neighborhood of Soleimania in Aleppo. Syrian state television. I was sleeping in, uh, in, a, in my home at nine morning. I just be shocked that bombs came to the floor, fifth floor, in the building, and all the building shake. Action in Syria was every day, like shooting, every day bombing. You cannot go anywhere, you cannot go to study, you cannot go to work, you cannot go to anything. Uh, every day was killing like 100 people, 50 people. I lost a lot of friends. I have one, she was a basketball coach, and she did when, we was, when she was going to teach uh, some kids how to play basketball, and sniper killed her. And I have my friend, he was going to the school, and. Uh, Camp bomb and he died. I didn't have chance. I I had to, I have to go out of Syria because I'm I have to go to the military and I don't want to go and fight and kill anyone. I want to leave. Just want to leave in peace. I left Syria in difficult situation. To move from country to another country, you need money. It was so difficult for my parents, for my family there. But I was the person that I have to leave Syria because my life was is nothing safe at all there because I'm young and everybody need me to fight with him. Uh, need me to give me the gun and shoot other people. They were telling me stories about how they survived, how they, uh, they escaped dangers uh, through the checkpoints when, until they leave the country. We took a bus from the Aleppo to Damascus, me and my brother, and then we took a bus from the Damascus to Lebanon. From Lebanon, we took a ship to Turkey. It was so dangerous. The boat was, uh, uh, it usually it's fit, uh, I think, 500, 400 uh, people, but it was full for 1,000. These people, they experienced a traumatic situation traumatic because they came from a war zones and they escaped. They lost their everything. They lost their home, they lost their part of relatives. Uh, when we was in Istanbul, we was con connect with my aunt on a phone and we sent them to the application and the paper what they want and they did everything. I was speaking to my aunt, I have aunt here in Canada, and uh, she said, she crying on a phone, she said, I, I can't do anything here in Canada they're not allowed to bring anyone here to Canada. And after two months, the government of Canada changed. And that change has changed my life too. That time, Justin Trudeau, he opened uh, uh, the way for Syrian refugees that they can come to Canada legally. That time my aunt called me and she said, I have good news for you, I have good news for you. I said, what? She said, I did put your application to the government sponsored by church. And, uh, and now application now in the process. I did receive the call from the Canadian embassy that they let me know that my application is it's approved. But I was shocked. We get a phone call from the embassy, actually not from the embassy, from some organization that they said you have to come to Ankara. I'm very happy. I was crying on the phone and speaking to the Canadian embassy and they said, don't worry, you are now in safe and your application was approved. The uh, Syrian uh, crisis has been well, one of the largest displacement of uh, refugees in recent years. As such, uh, we as uh, an agency, the Durham Regional Police, have taken an active role in that integration and settlement for Syrians uh, and newcomers. I think it's a great opportunity for us to be able to help our newcomers come into integrating to Durham. I've had the opportunity to meet two Syrian young men who have come into Durham and they're trying their best to integrate. And I think it's very important for us to see them just as we want people to see us. Try to understand them. They were coming from a different culture, different backgrounds. 
and they they didn't choose to come to this country as like planned way it was not planned like what i did as immigrant they didn't know the culture they didn't know how they think so our responsibility as a canadians who are welcoming these refugees to understand I believe that sometimes uh, there is a perception that newcomers are a burden to our social services. Uh, it's been my experience that is anything but that. Uh, they come with skills, they come with identities, they come with a whole host of, of opportunities uh, that they want to expand upon in our community and help us be successful, help themselves be successful. They are going to be uh, I think uh, uh, an asset for future uh, for, for this country because not all of them uh, general laborers know there are skillful people are in these refugees also. What we're doing here is bigger than ourselves and it is important for us to make sure that we make those who are coming, newcomers especially, feel accepted. Uh, we will endeavor to connect with them, support them, see their success, and, and ultimately, you know, for a, the best case scenario would be that one of them would one day be part of this organization. We all are refugees, and we all uh, pass through the uh, uh, difficulties in life, and it could be your dreams can come true here too. Canada is definitely a place where they can um, find sanctuary and a place of hope and peace and to fulfill their dreams. I promised my, my mother and my father that uh, I'm going back. I'm, work, I'm gonna work hard to let you move from, from Syria to another country safe.